Now, iteration is a method used for estimating solutions to equations that you couldn't normally solve um, algebraically. Now, you'll typically see something like this, where you have xn plus 1 is equal to something like, I don't know, xn maybe over 3 plus 2, some, something like that. Um, this it might even be squared, there may be a square root, but in its simplest form it's something like this, where this means that the next term is the previous term divided by 3 plus 2. So in an iterative formula, to find the next term in your sequence effectively, you're going to be using your previous value. Now there are four main questions that are asked on this and the first one is to do with showing how something has a solution between two values. Now the easiest way to do this is to rearrange your formula equal to zero um, and then these diagrams help illustrate what it is you're actually looking for. Now if we have two values a and b, if we have an equation that's equal to zero we can say that if A is negative and if B is positive, then that solution, this here, must be between those two values because the only way it's going to cross the x-axis is if it goes from negative to positive. So it has to cross somewhere. And if it's positive on this side and negative on this side, then it must be equal to zero in between. Similarly, if the first value was positive and the second one was negative, then there must be a solution in between because to go from positive to negative you must cross the x-axis. So in terms of answering this, so this is typically a part A, what we would do is rearrange this to become x cubed minus 14 is equal to 0. Now what I'm going to do is substitute in 2 and 3. So we do f of 2. So if we stick 2 into this function we get 2 cubed minus 14, 2 cubed is 8, minus 14 is minus 6. If we do f of 3, we get 3 cubed minus 14, which is equal to 27 minus 14, which is 13. Now we can say that as f of 2 is less than 0 and f of 3 is greater than 0, what this tells us is there must be a solution in between. So the way we would phrase that would be to say um, as the sign changes there must be a solution between 2 and 3. And we're going to apply the same idea to this one on the right. So we can, we don't need to rearrange this because it's already equal to zero. So if we put zero in, which is the first one here, um, so we do zero cubed plus six times zero squared minus nine lots of zero plus two, uh, that unsurprisingly is zero plus zero minus zero plus two, which is two. And if we do f of 0 0.5, so we do 0 0.5 cubed plus 6 lots of 0 0.5 squared, take away 9 lots of 0 0.5 plus 2. This one is equal to negative 0 0.875. So again, we can say um, f of 0, this time is greater than 0, and f of 0 0.5 is less than 0. And then same thing as the thing on the right. So writing all of that stuff, and there's a solution between... 0 and 0 0.5. Now the second type of question that's typically asked is to do a rearranging. So you might see something like this where it says show that the equation x cubed plus 5x minus 1 equals 0 can be rearranged to give this. Now quite often you will use the answer to work out how to go about doing the original equation. Now we can see that this involves x cubed, there's no cube rooting in it, so I must be trying to isolate this 5x here first before then dividing by 5 as it looks like here. So the first thing you would do is add 1, so 
x cubed plus 5x equals 1. Subtract the x cubed, so 5x equals 1 minus x cubed. So x then is 1 minus x cubed all divided by 5. So that's that one shown there. The one underneath, again, we need to use what we can see here. So we've got x, cubed, uh, x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. And we need to rearrange it to this. Now again, the x squared, so there's been no square rooting here. So it must be this term I'm looking to isolate. However, this term here is negative and all of this is positive. So that gives us a hint as to what the first step should be. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 3x to both sides. So that gives me x squared plus 1 is equal to 3x. So everything is positive here. Now if I divide by 3, I'll get x is equal to x squared plus 1 divided by 3. Now it doesn't quite look like that. So what I need to do is divide each term then by 3. So x then is equal to x squared divided by 3 plus 1 third. Finally, we've got show that the equation x squared minus 5x plus 6 can be rearranged to give x is the square root of 5x minus 6. Now, as this one involves a square root, I must be trying to get this part by itself. So if I add 5x, I'll have x squared plus 6 is equal to 5x. Then minusing the 6, I get 5x minus 6. And then finally, square rooting gives me root 5x minus 6. Now, we're going to have a look at two questions, effectively, where one looks at the first two things we've looked at and then looks at applying the iterative formula. And then the second one looks at how we um, can make sense of what it actually means. So this question here says so three parts, and it has all of the different sections we've been looking at. So the first one we're looking at does it have a root between 4 and 5? So part A, so we find f of 4, so that would be 4 squared minus 5 times 4 plus 2, which would be, well you type in your calculator, but 16 minus 20 is minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2. And then f of 5 is 5 squared, take away 5 times 5 plus 2, so 25 minus 25 plus 2, so that's positive 2. So we have f of 4 is less than 0, f of 5 is greater than 0, so there's a change in sign, so there's a change of sign, so therefore solution between 4 and 5. For part B, we need to do a rearrangement, so it's like the last one we did. So x squared plus 2 is equal to 5x. x squared is 5x minus 2. x is the square root of 5x minus 2. So knowing that we need to get this part by itself because we're going to be square rooting towards the end. Now for part C, this is the part where we need to use our calculator to work out the solution. So what we can do is... Um, if I just scroll down, so we know that x0 is equal to 5, and we need to find a solution correct to one decimal place to this equation. So we're going to use this formula um, to approximate the solution to this correct to one decimal place. Now the easiest way to do this is to type 5 into your calculator and press equals. So 5 and then equals, and that will store that then as your answer. Now you can apply the iterative formula then by typing into your calculator the square root of 5 times your answer, so press the ANS button, um, minus 2. Now the benefits of doing this is because an iterative formula keeps using your previous answer, that means you don't have to keep typing the formula out again and again and again. So every time you press equals, it will tell you the next number in the sequence. So if you do 5 and then equals and then type this in and then press equals, you'll get x1, which is equal to 4.7958 and carries on. If you press equals again, you'll get x2, which is 4.6882. Um, x3 
which is 4.6304. X4 then is 4.5992. Now this one doesn't tell you to press it a certain number of times or to find a certain number of sequences. It says find an estimate for the solution. So I would just press equals for about 10 more times and see what you land up on. And what you'll find is, is that it will be somewhere around 4.6. Um, to 4.61. So because we're writing it to one decimal place then, we can say that our solution is x is equal to 4.6 because what you will see is that the number, um, if you round it, will be 4.6 and every time you press equals it doesn't change enough to change it from rounding to 4.6. So final question then. So this one has a rearrangement to start with. So what we want here is something a little bit more unusual. So you've got 3x squared minus x cubed plus 3 is 0. And it rearranges to give x is 3 plus 3 over x squared. Now, as we can see here, this doesn't involve any x cubed. And it also doesn't involve any roots. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is divide everything by x squared. And if I divide everything by x squared, I'll get 3 minus x plus 3 over x squared equals 0. And now if I add x, I'll get 3 plus 3 over x squared equals x. For part b, it says using xn plus 1 equals this, with x0 equals 3.2, find the values of x1, 2, and 3. So again, I would type 3.2 into my calculator and then press equals, and then do 3 plus 3 divided by a n s squared and then you'll get x1 is 3.293 x2 is 3.277 and then x3 is 3.279 now for part c it says explain what the values of x1 x2 and x3 represent so like what do these numbers actually mean so for part C, and I'll do that over here, um, what they represent, so x1, x2, and x3, they represent approximate solutions to the equation 3x squared minus x cubed plus 3 equals 0. So they represent um, approximate solutions to the equation 3x squared minus x cubed plus 3 is equal to 0. If that's not given to you, as in an equation here, then you might have to rearrange this one here. Okay, But generally, if it was a question like this, it's an approximate solution to this. So the iteration, if you keep going, will tell you what value of x gives you 0.